my next guest, he's a professional mixed martial artist with a record of 12 wins and three losses. He is currently on a three fight winning streak, coming off a second round finish in March. Please welcome onto the show my guest, Mohammed Farhad. How you doing, Mohammed? Very well, brother. Jose, thank you for having me here. Oh, no problem, man. Thank you for uh, making the time. I know it was a little tricky with time zone and everything going going around, and me being in the U.S. and uh, you being Very in cool. Standard Time. It's um, it was a different experience, you know. But I I love it, man. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing about MMA, man. Uh, you connect with people all over the world, so I always welcome that, man. How you been, man? Exactly, I've been doing very, very good. Uh, not into trading much right now, but yeah, some work and stuff over here. You know, this COVID situation in India, you might have the news and all. But uh, yeah, everything going very well. What about you, man? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for asking, man. Uh, you know, it's been a, it's been a very good uh, time for the show. We've been, you know, just getting things done, man. Get getting things done, and uh, with with Rizvan and everything, and he's helped so yeah. much. Such a fantastic uh, person. And just in general, yeah. man, uh, helping out, obviously, he helped set this up. So thank you to him. Shout out to him and all the great work that he does over there. But real, before we get started, Mohammed, uh, let the audience know who you are. For those that may not be familiar with you or your work, I know you fight for uh, Brave CF, man. But what else can you tell the audience? Um, you can say that before being a fighter, you know, I have done a lot of things before accepting this as a career. Okay. Uh, you can say... Uh, I've done a lot of courses also before. Accepting sports in India is not a, you know, a common thing. Uh, especially, I don't know about you guys, but in India, it is bad. Uh, then at the end, I thought that I'm good in fighting, you know, and I used to uh, play some nationals in Muay Thai. And I used to achieve victories and all. So that's how I kept my word in my family. And then they allowed me, okay, no other option. We give you this option also to do. Just try it out. And then it came out to be success, you know, in this thing. So that's how it all started, man. Definitely. So you weren't allowed to choose MMA as a career. Is that correct? I was allowed. You were allowed. Okay. Uh, there was no other option for me, actually. You know, I okay. tried a couple of things before. So my family said, okay, let's try this also. If you think you can do this, let's try this. Def definitely. That's awesome, man. I mean, if I would have told my parents, hey, I want to do a podcast or or talk about sports, they probably would have been like, what? You? But yes, I'm very fortunate to be able to pick it. <laughs> <yeah>. pick it. <laughs> so luck, luckily, you've been good at it. So uh, that's awesome. And you, you've been fantastic. I mean, 12 and 3, brother, out of those 12 wins, I want to let the audience know that 11 out of those 12 are finishes. And I mean, you've been getting done. You've been putting in the work. You're on a current a three fight win streak. Again, your most recent win was in March. And obviously, it's been tough with COVID and everything going around to compete and stuff. And it's definitely yeah. not made things any easier having to deal with either quarantines or getting vaccinated or just having to wear a mask, social distance, training partners and all that other. Everything, uh, everything was different. Yeah. Crazy, crazy, man. Now, how was that for you as a fighter? Like, was it, was it difficult to be able to find sparring partners when you're preparing for your latest fight? It, it was at mm -hmm. a time, but I was lucky enough that uh, one training camp was going on over here in Mumbai where I stay. Uh, at uh, ultimate, I think uh, at my friend's Chaitanya's place, uh, he stays in Bombay. So they, these guys were training for uh, amateur fights. So I was lucky enough to, you know, join that team and sharpen up my uh, wrestling skills. Before that, I was training under my uh, striking coach, uh, Master Gunser. Uh, he gave me some strength and SNC courses and uh, some some striking courses. I sharpened up my striking under him. And then for the to come to compete in MMA, I also need some grappling and some grappling partners. So yeah, I was lucky enough that they were doing the camp over here in Mumbai for some uh, amateur event. I went in, I stepped in, they welcomed me, and then we trained for that, and I got ready for my last fight. Mm -hmm. So that was a tough time because I was staying in two 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 states. You know, I stay in Bangalore also, and also in Mumbai. So I had to travel, I had to manage some stuffs. Then COVID thing, then RT PCR. It was a tough, but I, I don't know that how we finished that event. You know how I got ready, but ultimately it was a, a funny thing actually. Definitely. I mean, it, it worked out. I mean, you got the second round finish, so obviously it, it worked out. It, it was good for you. Are you planning to go back there for uh, your any future fights that you are gonna prep for? 
I am planning to this year again, mm -hmm. but the situation I think is not in my favor right now. Maybe because uh, last month uh, I had contacted COVID, me and my wife actually. So we went through a quarantine of uh, three weeks. Then here in India, they made a rule that once you are infected, then after three months, you should wait and then take the vaccination. Oh. So I think in October, it, it makes three months. And then one more rule they have made that after first dose, you have 80, you should take a break of 80 days now. 80 days? For the second dose, 80 days. I don't know what's the reason behind that. I heard that in, in, in UK also, they are following the same uh, thing, maybe. So mm -hmm. that this situation doesn't seem to be in the favor to fight uh, this year. But if I get the opportunity to fight even in this, God willing, I'll definitely step in for the training camp and definitely prepare myself and I'll definitely take the opportunity. No, definitely. Oh, that's uh that's crazy. You know, I'm I'm I don't work for like the CDC or anything like that. And so I wouldn't know, but I know in the US they make you wait 21 days. 21 oh. days was the rule even here in India. But I don't know because of due to less of vaccination. Of course. I don't know. I don't know what's the main reason behind that. They gave the uh thing that they are also doing the same thing in UK. But no official answer for that, I think. Definitely. What I, mean, I guess it's crazy. that maybe the lack of vaccination, so they are giving a good gap for the people for the second dose and all. No, yeah, it makes sense. I mean, we live in different parts of the world. So obviously, you know, not not everything's the same for everywhere you live, of course, you know. So it's definitely different, you know, and it also makes it makes it interesting because not everyone is in the same situation. You know, there's other people that, you know, that may not get a good influx of that kind of stuff on there, which affects your careers you know you you can't what you can't fight until you get vaccinated i'm not sure that's what i'm saying if i get the opportunity i'll take it i'm not sure mm, okay. because uh, events are going on in bahrain if sheikh khalid bin hamad al khalifa the owner of brave if he calls me i might go you know if he allows me to enter his country i might go and i might fight so anything can happen yeah it's yeah like definitely that. in the fight game anything can definitely happen but let me back it up here so again you're 12 and 3 uh, three fight win streak coming off a second round finish but let's back up to the start of your mma career and you start off and how long have you been in uh the game of mixed martial arts muhammad uh if you give me a time to count i might say seven seven years maybe i've been doing this uh professionally yes and uh, more than a decade around 13 years i've been i've started learning this art and competing in amateurs, national level, Muay Thai competitions. I've also fought in some hat kido competitions and uh, also some kickboxing competitions, a couple of grappling competitions also. Then I stepped into, you know, MMA professionally. Before doing MMA, actually, I've done a couple of courses also. I have done hotel management, ship welding, and, you know, the cruise ships and all, the, those welding and all to yeah. acquire some skills in that. Merchant Navy, you can say. And a couple of more stuffs I did before, uh, uh, you know, stepping into the career of MMA. And then uh, when it started, so while I was doing my all studies, I was also taking out time to practice uh, striking. Okay. Then when I felt that now I have some next level, then I thought that let's let's do this. Let's even try this opportunity. Now, what? what but I never tried. I'm that? sorry, but I, ne I never tried MMA just to try. I, I knew that I will do something in this. No, so, okay, so piggybacking off that then, which, which is the point I, wa I want to get to, like, what was it that made you confident in yourself that says, I can go out there and compete, I can go out there and be successful at this? What about, what about yourself or what about anything that you've gone through made you realize that you can be successful in this line of work? Because it is tough. MMA is tough and it's not for everyone and it takes a very special individual to go out there and take a fight and go out there and be victorious. I mean, it takes, there's a lot that goes into it. What, what about you made you feel comfortable with that? Since childhood, you know, I was a lot of lot into action movies and all. Okay. And uh, I was a tough guy in my school also. And the, when I started martial arts, I was very tough in the ring. Also, I used to play Muay Thai for in, in national level. I used to test myself that time in amateurs, you know, that to what extent I can go. And in that also, I was having a lot of uh, knockouts in Muay Thai national level. 
so that made me believe that i am good in this thing and i should make this as a profession when i started learning martial arts that time uh, you know mma was nobody knew what is muay thai in india now i am 32 i was 19 when i started learning martial arts that time nobody knew what is muay thai in india mm-hmm. uh, then i had to explain the muay thai is an art of from thailand so it's thai boxing like how we say kung fu is chinese boxing yes. so i need to i needed to explain but now everybody in india they know what's muay thai so then mma got introduced to me there was one uh, show used to go on sfl super fight league that time i came to know that mma is something and, and when ufc started we got introduced to it and i was a guy where i liked to use like all aspects you know i like to use not only boxing but also my kicks also my elbows my knees that's that was the reason why i joined uh, muay thai and not boxing and not kickboxing and not taekwondo at that time when i got introduced into mma then i said wow it's it 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 allows you to use you know more it allows you to acquire more skills and there is uh, no stoppage no count and then you can go to any extent in mma so i said wow let's do this this is my type of sport now what motive what motivates you to be able to go out there and continue to train and win and fight and cut weight what motivates you mohammed when you uh, go out there and prepare for a fight when actually i started this i was my self motivation and i was the motivation for other people which was uh, surrounded by me you know that time but now the amount of support we get from india and uh, the organizations like brave and all sheikh khalid bin hamad al khalifa all this type of supports what we get that motivates me a lot you know and plus my surrounding now has become uh, all i'm surrounded with athletes now so that's my environment right now so that's why i want to do this more and want to achieve the highest level possible in my life in my career now for you mohammed as far as fighting and overall what has been your toughest test as a fighter maybe it's a fight maybe it's a weight cutting process maybe it's just a mental thing can you tell me or detail me a time where it was your toughest test going into any kind of sorts of mma competition but i believe is every step for an athlete is tough okay. and you have to go through everything you know to do one fight you have to stay out uh, you know you have to take stay out without your family uh, that's not easy man staying out without your family and earning out there in different state starting something new every time and then we are when you are stepping in the fight camp you know meeting new people dealing with them in the fight camp when i was in thailand you know every fighters had different mentality you had to deal with all those fighters in a, in us like a middle way you know not very soft not very hard even while sparring you don't know what mentality he is having what will you know hurt his ego more and plus when you're ready when you're doing the weight cut and <laughs> if you're not on good diet then you're killed over there you know it makes you suffer a lot and then after that weight cut is the toughest i can say in <laughs> mma but last time uh, during that was pakistan fight i did a very smooth weight cut and it all comes with experience i would say definitely not there man what was your first weight cut like man when you're preparing for a fight for the first time you've never stepped in into the cage in a professional matter there to compete with somebody and you're having to cut weight for the first time to make weight for a fight for your first fight how was that experience like you can say you know when i was doing uh, amateur fights at that time mm-hmm. i i never cut my weight you know i used to eat more i used to gain my weight and fight because we had a group of people going into tournament and when you know my partner and me we are on the same weight category i i used to eat some banana some soft drinks and all lot of water and gain some weight and then make weight and fight but when i stepped professionally into this that time i realized oh shit you know my height my body and uh, i am getting a tougher opponent then you know a heavy weight opponent so even i have to make weight i have to maintain weight i have to eat clean Of course. These all things I learned in my career till now, and that's why my last fight was an easy weight cut. But first time when I did that, I was like lying in the sauna this way. I thought I'm gonna die. How, <laughs> oh, yeah, how am I gonna take this? 
and they will cut my purse money also if i want if i will not make my weight you know 20% 25 depends on the category of my weight is up they will cut so much of money thinking that you know that used to motivate me to stay in there in the sauna wear sauna so do some jogging drop that last pound of 100 that last 100 grams you know yeah and course. then make weight so that experience till now you know it had given me a good experience that how to manage all these things now definitely you know it's definitely a, a huge lesson learned obviously weight cutting no secret is to every fighter if not it's one of the most dreadful parts of you know getting ready for a fight you know the fight itself you love it right it's a sport and weight cut in itself yeah. is just i don't want to say a drag but it's something that i think a lot of fighters that they had the opportunity to skip that they would probably foot fast forward to the fight when it comes to that kind of stuff Woo, weight cutting yeah. Oh man, I've never had to do that. Thankfully, I've never had to do that. It does it does, it does not Lucky you. sound fun. I like to eat Lucky pizza, you, man. So I like to eat pizza, brother. So it, it'd be. I eat pizza. I love pizza. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. Now, uh, for you, Mohammed, what's uh, one of the biggest le- lessons that the sport of MMA has taught you? If you would ask me the question, I would love to say it's discipline. Okay. I think I lacked in discipline in my life, and. you know killing that ego you know in me <clears throat> that is the second thing what i can say because being a fighter is like a military life you have to do your own stuff mostly because you're not with your family and then you have to be disciplined also you have to get up on time you have to go out for a jog then you have to eat your breakfast on time then again you have to do one session and then again you come and rest and then again lunch on time then evening jog then again once session and then if you are having little more weight you have to do one more jogging thing yeah. before your dinner so it's a you know it's a, it's a, it's a very planned schedule you know it's a very planned schedule every time around the clock you have to follow everything time time for 2 3 months and what i believe that if you do something for 40 days and then then you are set with that you know you are trained to do that now no definitely i mean you know you end up uh, creating routine like i'm a creature of habit you know I like to wake up at the same time every single day obviously like for myself mohammed i came from a field where i was working in the restaurant in- industry a while back so a lot of late yes. nights you know sleeping yeah. late waking up late i've done that yeah so it obviously it's harder when you're done from that and you're trying to transition to just waking up morning because you know i like to get a lot of stuff done early so it was a habit man it, it was a, not a habit but it was a hectic for me to wake up and not hit snooze and just want to stay asleep <laughs> you know it's a challenge in itself but you're right after you know once you can do something for about 40 40 days in a row your body yeah. it's clockwork and it just becomes habit for you so i, I love that you mentioned that there now when it comes to mma obviously we all have goals right and this is where i want to transition to we all have goals there's things that we want to accomplish what is a goal that you have set for yourself when you started the sport of mma mohammed before when i started mma i mean my in my mind it was like i want to be the world's you know i want to i wanted to be the world champion okay when i started mma which is a good thing to think you know that's how you start and you learn and you work on that on developing your skills but now what i think i wanted i want to be the world's best skilled fighter okay the best skilled i want fighter. to be that right now yeah world's best skilled fighter so that's why i'm trying to you know improve my skills in all aspects uh a lot of people think that i'm very weak in grappling which i don't do in the cage as you see it's a lot of knockouts over there so why don't i use my we- weapon when i require grappling i'll do my grappling thing so that's what i've shown in my last fight my opponent tried to wrestle me a lot and it, i did not allowed him to that time so that was uh, my improvement i can say in my last fight in my grappling thing Okay, and and definitely with that, mm-hmm. how will I be the world's best skill fighter if I'm a champion? So these two things are in my mind. So to become a champion, I have to be one of the world's best skill fighters. Connect. So that's my first step to do that. Now, so your opponent was trying to wrestle you. Obviously, that comes through your camp. Uh, avoid the takedown and do your thing. I mean, if there's any, I'm not saying that there's criticism. If there's any criticism, I mean, it's MMA, man. It's mixed martial arts. you do you right. and you follow your game plan your game plan is to keep it up and keep it standing and you're able to do that i mean it's your opponent's job to counter that you know what i mean 
yeah. and you do your job and you and and you win brother i mean that is that is you you doing you and you following the game plan and more power to you because it's it's hard to train for a fight from you know what i've never fought like that but it's hard i'm sure it's a long process to train for a fight it's harder having a game plan and sticking to it though because there's a lot of people that have game plans and have an issue with the, you know sticking to it you know and yep. obviously there's people and i've heard that their stories were in Fighters don't listen to their corners. Some do, some don't. I feel like there's a, a split when it comes to that. Now for you, Mohammed, how important is it on fight day to be able to stick to a game plan through your corner? Or is it just something that kind of goes out the window because there's so many things going on that listening to your corner obviously may not always work out for you in a fight? You know, you don't always have to stick to the game plan. It depends on the situation also. Okay. Many of the time. But about if you if you're talking about game plan, what does that actually mean? Is studying your opponent. That mm -hmm. is the main thing. It does not mean that you are practicing certain combos for a thousand of time and then you have to hit with the same combo. People think it is that. Or if I want to wrestle my opponent, I am constantly trying to take him down every time. The situation might change. You know, every time. Depends on what opportunity we get. And on that we have to act on. Like for example, I'm practicing jab still i'm improving my jab the speed and the power of my jab if the situation permits me my jab should go and connect him anyhow it's like that and then i might follow the combo which i have been practicing or i might not it, it's it, it, it all depends of on situation but what i believe about the game plan is studying your opponent very well and getting ready that what is coming from his side no, definitely. You know, I, I, had a, I had a guy, I knew a guy, um, great guy, fought for Bellator and his first fight at Bellator. He told me, you know, it was important to stick to a game plan. He thought in sticking to a game plan was so, so, so important, crucial. He was telling me he was studying the opponent and uh, he saw like his social medias. So he saw all these uh, trophies and grappling. It's him just grappling, 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 grappling. So he's like, okay, stay off the ground. He has so many grappling trophies, whatever there. I mean, he's a ground guy, jujitsu, wrestling. So let's take first thing. First thing he goes, gets in the fight and he clocks him and he cuts him open. And he told me that it turns out after the fight that he didn't realize that homeboy was a very a skilled kickboxer, but he just didn't show it on his social media or anything like that. But it turns oh, yeah. out he's a very accomplished kickboxer. So, I mean, the guy still managed to win, but obviously the game plan for him, he was, it was a surprising one, obviously. So it doesn't always work out that way. So it's very interesting there. Now, what is your goal that you have uh, for yourself within the next uh, two years, Mohammed? Do you expect yourself to be a world champion by then and accomplish being a skilled, uh, very the most skilled, the best skilled fighter that you can be? Or do you still think you still got a little bit of more time going? Still, I need to improve in skill level. You can say I, I, I still need improvement. But if you're saying for the title fight, if Brave Combat Federation is giving me the opportunity to fight my next fight is a title fight. I think I'm going to be ready. Mm -hmm. I think in my mind, I've said already that, and plus on the plus point for me is that Brave Pantomweight belt right now is vacant. Oh, it's vacant right now. It is vacant right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for this opportunity also from Brave Combat Federation because I've been, I've been doing this MMA for years, man. And I'm doing martial arts for years. Still, I'm learning. But, you know, I think I'm ready for uh, the world title right now. If, if they give me the opportunity this year, I'll make myself ready, no matter what I have to do. If next year, I'll make myself ready. You definitely sound ready. Real quick, Mohammed, before and as we're sending, uh, heading to the end of this uh, interview here, I have another question for you now. Brave CS is a fantastic organization, gives a lot of opportunities, and there's a lot of great athletes there that are competing right now. There's plenty of them right now. Now, for you though, is your end game because a lot of people that like talk MMA or just are mixed martial arts fans think about UFC, Bellator, PFL. Is one of your goals to be able to make it to one of those organizations or are you just happy and would just like to stick to Brave? I'm, I'm happy with Brave actually. Brave is taking care of their fighters in a good way. Okay. But if in future I'm getting opportunity in, in more bigger organization, I'll be definitely happily, I'll, you know, step in that. 
Oh, definitely awesome. Now, Mohammed, real quick before we end this interview, is there anything you want to let the audience know? To my audience, to India, uh, for the people from India, uh, I would like to give some message to fighters that a uh, lot of the lot of fighters, especially in India, I know I don't know about US actually. In India, I know that I have been through that in my place. You know, when I started uh, the career in MMA, what I used to think that I was a tough guy. So what I used to think that I can go to any level and fight. And when I step into the real fight. At that time, I realized that this is not easy shit. And we have to practice a lot. What we think inside that, oh, it's a, it's a UFC level. You know, I can fight in UFC. Of course. But if you, if you look, you might think like that. But when you step inside the cage, you know, that level is totally different. Of course. So to the, to the amateur fighters, what I would suggest them that you have to find out the pros and cons in you and you have to work on that. You know, because MMA is the fastest growing sport in India right now. We have a very few fighters, according to the population in India. We have very few fighters. I can say around 1,000, 2,000 amateur MMA fighters, maybe. And 10 in top list, uh, I would say. But that's still big for them in future. In coming near future, I think MMA is big in India. And I get phone calls that my child, my friend's child, they want to, you know, start doing MMA and they are just 10 years old right now, which is a big thing for a country like India, especially in the sports of fighting, yeah. you know, where uh, our mothers, you know, have a very much soft corner in their heart for their children, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, so I would say this amateur fighters that you have to go stepwise, wherever you want to go, you have to go stepwise, fight in small promotions, then fight the international amateur promotions and then definitely you'll get the opportunity in higher level. And I would like to also thank uh, our uh, Indian MMA fans for constantly supporting me in my each and every journey. Uh, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it a lot. That's awesome. Thanks to you also, Ose. No, thank you to you, Mohammed, for the time. And I just want to ask you a real quick last question. What can fans expect from Mohammed Farhad whenever they see him fight in the future? They're going to see always, uh, you know, I want to keep my fight very much excited, excitement in that. And I'm going to maintain that in the fight. And I'm going to work definitely more harder and harder. If you see my first fight and you see my last fight, you will, uh, you know, you can tally and uh, find the difference in every fight. You have seen something new. Some fights I have shown a leg kick knockout. Some fight I have shown a head kick knockout. Some fight I have shown, you know, punch a knockout with a punch uh, so every fight I'm trying to do something different and I'll try to keep that you know I'll try to maintain that in my each and every fight that's awesome so it and will be excitement what I can say is thank excitement. you excitement excitement is definitely in your description in your job description Mohammed Farhad record of 12 and 3 11 finishes out of those 12 he's not just talking just to talk folks it is legitimate right here 12 and 3 three fight win streak folks Thank you, Mohammed. I know it's uh, it's been uh, it was a little stretch right now, you know, doing it with the time zone difference right now between us. Yep. I want to thank you so much. Thank Rizvan uh, for helping us set this up, and thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to be able to come on the show, man. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Awesome, and to the, all your audience, thank you for joining us today. Have a safe day. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.